This is the work of Zdzislaw Bekszynski, a man famous for his dystopian surrealism. To most people, these images incite feelings of suffering, anxiety, or horror. But what if I told you that the artist thought some of his paintings were rather optimistic, sometimes even humorous? Art Review Recently I stumbled across this painting and was drawn in by the Latin inscribed in the top left corner. In hoc signo vences, in this sign you will conquer, a phrase famously used by Constantine in reference to the Christian cross, which can be seen on the cradle as well as in red on the almost crucified humanoid in the top left corner. My curiosity was piqued. What was the artist's intent? I wanted to know more, so I went to look at the title of the painting, only to find it was untitled. All there was was the artist's name, Bikshinsky. After a quick search, I found an article pointing out even more symbolism. The color of the cloaked figure is Prussian blue, the color left behind on the walls of the Nazi gas chambers. And that phrase, in this sign thou shalt conquer, it was the phrase of the American Nazi party, but no interpretation. What was the artist trying to say? What's up with the birds? And most importantly, who was Zdzislaw Bikszynski? Bekszynski was born in Poland in 1929, ten years before the German-Soviet invasion began. During this time, the entire world bore witness to dystopian nightmares, but Poland especially so. Around 5.5 million Poles were killed, more than half of them Jews in a deliberate systematic genocide by the Nazis. Eventually, the Nazis were driven out by the Red Army, who maintained control until 1989. Bekszynski himself had no formal artistic education. He began by studying architecture during the Soviet occupation, in part because forms of creativity were looked down on by the state. He worked as a construction site supervisor, but hated it. During this time, he would work on his art as side projects. The first artistic medium in which he gained some fame was photography, developing a style that was a precursor to his later paintings. They depicted desolate landscapes, distorted faces, and so on. Surrealist photography in his day was looked down on, but his photo Sadis Corset made a big splash. Through the 1960s, after disrupting the photography world, he would focus more on his paintings, capturing some of the same themes of anxiety, depression, suffering, and fear. This was the beginning of his fantastic period. It was during this time that he made brilliant works like Untitled, or Untitled, or one of my personal favorites, Untitled. As if he couldn't get any more lovably mysterious, before moving to Warsaw in 1977, he burned a selection of his works in his own backyard. He later claimed that some of these works were, quote, too personal. But by knowing about his life, can I really get any closer to deciphering his work's meaning? The bird's meaning? Bekszynski himself was adamant that even he didn't know the meaning of his artworks, and was uninterested in possible interpretations. That's why he left all his paintings untitled, because he didn't want to influence the viewer's interpretations. Each person seems to look at them and has a different experience, like it's some sort of inkblot test. This is one of the best forms of art in my opinion, ones with loose betrayals of unconscious realities onto which a viewer can project more nuanced meanings. Despite his denial that his artwork contains any objective ideas, he said in a series of interviews that many of his pieces originated from dreams and even visions. He chose to call them visions rather than psychotic episodes which I found interesting. Claims of having visions are surprisingly common among great artists, so I wasn't surprised Bekszynski experienced something of this nature. He's clearly very talented, very visual, and very creative. However, this makes the psychoanalyst in me want to read profound unconscious insight into his work. Now, there are many recurring themes in Bekszynski's work, such as a symbol accompanying all the destruction. No doubt this form is inspired by the atrocities of the 20th century. Generally, I view many of these paintings as revealing the dark underside of the psyche that we don't like to acknowledge. His first hits, for example, showcase sadomasochistic eroticism. Seeing this strikes people because it's something very human that we don't acknowledge in ourselves very often. His work digs much deeper than that. Bekszynski paints the psychology of dystopia, the human drives of aggression, sadism, the human nature of herd mentality, those ancient tribalistic tendencies in all of us, the Freudian death drive and the more conscious need for meaning. All these pent up repressed or neglected human propensities just need a catalyst, a symbol to possess us on a grand scale. Empires have been built, crusades have been fought for a symbol, genocides have been committed for a symbol, gulags have been erected, torture enacted for a symbol. It is what has happened, and it is what will happen. It is dystopia spilled on a canvas. Terrible, natural, and on some unconscious level, beautifully compelling. A deep-seated desire, a collective shadow. 
There's the repeated symbol of brilliant architectural structures made out of human corpses, man-made constructions at the cost of immeasurable suffering. Now, I believe he really didn't intend to convey any particular idea, but that doesn't mean that strong reaction his artwork elicits is baseless. It also doesn't mean his inspiration was baseless. Just maybe there was psychological significance to his dreams and visions, and they weren't just incidental brain activity. So what does the painting mean? What is her brilliant conclusion? What did the birds mean? The world may never know. Bekshinsky's wife, Zofia, died in 1998. A year later, on Christmas Eve 1999, his son Tomac committed suicide by drug overdose. Bekshinsky discovered his son's body. Unable to come to terms with his son's death, he kept an envelope for Tomek in case I kicked the bucket pinned to his wall. On the 21st of February 2005, Bekshinsky was found dead in his flat in Warsaw with 17 stab wounds on his body. Two of the wounds were determined to have been fatal. May this brilliant man's work be forever appreciated. Hopefully I'm doing my part for those of you who haven't heard of him. If you like this video and you want to help out a tiny channel and see more videos like this, consider hitting the like button and leaving a positive comment below. Each thing helps, so thank you guys. Bye.